All right, so December 19th is when Rise of the Skywalker drops, 7 p.m. to be exact, because that's when I'm going to see the movie, and I'm looking forward to the review that I leave a few hours after the fact, because I'm sure it's going to be a complete mess. <laughs> they, they've done so much to Star Wars over the past couple of years, I don't see how it'll be good. Unless it's on television, I don't think that it's going to be worth anything, and that's for good reason. They have some good people that do the television stuff. In fact, I don't think Kathleen Kennedy has very much to do at all with the television television brands. I think that she thinks it's beneath her, and I think that's for good reason, because she thinks everything that is good with Star Wars goes on the big screen, and that's where the legacy is. But the facts are that she's damaged the brand so much that everyone looks to TV now because TV's had a pretty good track record the past like five or ten years now. We had Clone Wars, and then we had Star Wars Rebels, and now we have The Mandalorian. I uh, have not watched Star Wars Resistance. Not a lot of people really talking about that one, so I don't know if it's even any good anyway. If it is, leave me a comment and tell me. Now, one thing that I think is going to come back to bite Kathleen Kennedy in the rear is the fact that she's overlooked TV and kind of just let them do what they want to do. And lo and behold, they end up making good stuff. I think the team behind The Mandalorian is going to come around and end up taking her job. Uh, I don't believe she's going to be there in a few years. In fact, even the shill media is starting to talk about that. A bunch of Star Wars articles dropped today, by the way. As we get closer to Rise of the Skywalker, you're going to see more and more stuff come out. A lot of cringy stuff. Don't be surprised if you see big full-length novels defending Kathleen Kennedy online because of the shell media. Now, the shell media, their job is to drop to their knees, inch closer, work those zippers really good. That's what they do. And Kathleen Kennedy is on top, and they want to... They want to suck so good. So what they're going to do is they're going to start writing pieces about how she's the greatest thing to ever touch Star Wars in years. But before that call is made, you will see stuff like this slip out. Star Wars uncertainty uncertainty extends to Kathleen Kennedy's Disney future, which is absolutely true. I'm not going to be surprised if she's fired after this movie because when this movie is a disaster, it's already projected to make less than The Last Jedi, which already was unimpressive if you remember people were going oh it made a billion dollars but then you look at the history of the movies and what they've made they've made a lot more so it was already on a downward trend i expect that trend to continue and i have no doubt 100 percent in my mind that if the rise of skywalker bombs you will see kathleen kennedy get fired this year they won't even wait to 2021 or maybe they will because here's the thing, Bob Iger has came out and said, we're putting the Star Wars films on hiatus for a few years. I think he recognizes we could also get out a lot cheaper if we just wait one year, put everything on hiatus, maybe send her in circles, have her spin her de- have her chase her demon tail in circles, and then just not renew her contract, which I think she'll just leave voluntarily because if you wait to the last minute, Odds are then you realize we're going to go in a different direction and they'll start bringing in people to replace her. Enter Kevin Feige, who I totally believe uh, slithered his way into Star Wars. And I believe plans on usurping her out of her seat and taking it. And that has a lot to do with the fact that he's being brought in to do one movie. I believe that that was his plan all along. I bet he went and saw Bob and said, hey, Bob, you know, uh, I'm a pretty big Star Wars fan. You know, I've done a really good job over at Marvel. I'd like to come over there and make one of them better Star Wars films. What do you think about that, Bob? And Bob's probably like, well, you've made us a ton of money, Kevin. You know, we're near the disaster that Kathleen Kennedy is. Sure, we'll let you come in and produce one. Even though they say uh, it's going to be very limited one role in this article. <laughs> oh, no. He's going to come in and he's going to absolutely knock it out of the park with that one movie. Unless he brings Brie Larson in. And I also believe Brie Larson knows the way to his zipper. And I think that he might bring her in. If that happens, then the movie will be a disaster. And I don't see Bob bringing him in to be the main man behind Star Wars. I think that the people behind the television stuff deserve that role. But anyway, so here's the meat of everything. A lot of these articles are going straight to this and taking chunks out of it. Uh, This is the Rolling Stone doing an interview with Kathleen Kennedy. She managed to slither her way out of her troll cave. And do an interview, first time in a long time. And she says a lot of really stupid 
stupid stuff in this, really showing that she has no idea what she's doing and that she's still the complete fool when it comes to Star Wars that she's been since The Force Awakens. And it's funny, her writer's room has changed quite a bit. I don't know if you remember, but the story group at Lucas used to be completely made up of women. There's actually some nerdy-looking dudes in there now. But before, it used to be a bastion of diverse women. Which is, if you remember, running around with her force as female shirts and stuff, I think she got so, I think she got a big crack on the head and was told, you need to get some nerdy-looking dudes in there so these fans will think that we at least care. <laughs> I truly do believe they thought they could just throw some shiny ships around and use force powers, and then they could wrap around whatever agenda they wanted in the movie and put it on a slab and people would just eat it up. That's not the case. They realized that as soon as they put out their trash theme park and no one showed up. And now they finally realize that they're in trouble, and that's where the fake smile that 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 snake is putting on in that chair comes from because I think she feels the heat is on and she's going to lose her forces female platform after this movie. And I think she knows it's going to be a disaster, but it's really funny. She throws a lot of shade at George Lucas on here acts completely stupid too. Here's, here's a couple. So check this one out. This, I'm not going to read this whole thing, but uh, they, so she, they, they ask her a question about when they fired Colin from Jurassic world and you know, what's going on? Why'd you do that? Are you finding it to be hard to make this movie? And listen to what she says here. Every one of these movies is particularly a hard nut to crack. There's no source material. We don't have comic books. We don't have 800-page novels. We don't have anything other than the passionate storytellers who get together and talk about what the next iteration might be. We go through a really normal development process that everybody else does. Here's the funny thing. Okay, now Ryan's Outpost did a video on this, and he made really good points. And I, I'm going to agree with them here that you had an entire Legends universe that you put in the toilet. And here's the funny thing, right? She talks about not having comic books, not having these novels. Funny how the people behind the television shows, notably, let's go ahead and point out Star Wars Rebels, which used a ton of stuff from the expanded universe. So don't sit there and say you don't have those novels. You do have them. You just choose not to use them because you're an ass. So that's just, I found this funny. Like, how are you going to talk about you don't have those novels? Now, if this was a competent interviewer, someone that was really going to ask real questions, this is why I like to point out they're nothing but shills. They would have done a little bit of research and pointed out, hey, uh, in Star Wars Rebels, you used a ton of stuff. Uh, don't tell me you don't have those novels. Why don't you use them at all for the movies? And there, and in that point, she would get up and say this interview was over. So I just, I found that really funny. Next up, they do ask her about the next guy who's going to take her job, Kevin Feige. How did Marvel's Kevin Feige come into the mix? Kevin has been a huge fan of Star Wars, and he's made that pretty clear. And I think that when he went off to do a couple Star Spider-Man movies, he realized that he could kind of step in and do what he's doing specifically with just Marvel. He talked to us. You mean he talked to Bob. And he talked to the studio and said, You know, is there any chance that I could step in and do one of the Star Wars movies? And I thought, it was a pretty cool idea. So we're just beginning to talk about what that might be and what that might what that might be and when that might be. But it's a ways off. I know, it's off when you're off of your seat. When you're fired, then they're going to bring him in. He's going to make that movie. And as long as Brie Larson uh, is not in the, in the seat for the movie, as long as she's not the Jedi or whatever they're going to have her be, a lot of people are saying it's going to be Ahsoka. Uh, I think the movie might be good because Kevin can make good stuff. As long as she's not in it, I think we're going to see a really good movie. We'll see. you know. But I think that he's next in line. I think they're really thinking of him to come over and take over Star Wars. They just put somebody else in over at Marvel. Marvel can kind of run itself. And I think that they want to get Star Wars going again. They have a theme park dedicated to it. It makes sense. So here's where she starts showing, throwing some shade at George. There's a big, long thing here talking about, you know, George didn't like the movies, basically. Uh, what's your feelings about this? And she goes on this big, long thing, basically speaking for him, which I thought was funny. Oh, it's hard to let go. You know, George loves what we're doing, though. <laughs> I think they put a gag order or something on him. Keep in mind, George owns a bunch of Disney stock. And I think they went, went to him and said, for the good of the company, you need to shut your mouth and you need to stop talking. 
because you're gonna you're gonna hurt this brand. People really will take every sentence you say, and you know, hey, uh, you need to shut up. So he is. It's why you haven't really heard him say much lately. Though he was on the set of The Mandalorian and he looked like he was having a good time. I think he has nothing but good things to say about that show. And from what I hear, they actually took a lot of his advice. Huh. That's interesting. No wonder the show's so far been pretty damn good. But let's go ahead and go down here. Here's where she really throws him under the bus. Listen to this. Is there any universe in which George can be lured back for some kind of one-off or just to do anything? I doubt it right away. You know, she had that ready to go. I doubt it. But listen, I think that would be fantastic. If he would be interested in doing that again, but I doubt it. He's loving his museum, the Los Angeles, the Lucas Museum of Narrative Art right now. That's a huge project, which is going to be absolutely fantastic. It's a narrative museum, so it's really so it really keeps him engaged in storytelling. I think he's loving that, and he's loving his little girl, so he's pretty fulfilled. Of course, you know, let's not ask George himself if he would like to come back. We're going to go ahead and say hell no. We don't want him giving people uh, any memories of what Star Wars could be. Uh, we don't want people thinking, uh, giving them hope. We want them to know that the devil is still in charge and everything's just fine. Now, I will link that article in the description so you can read it yourself. A lot of these articles that dropped today are directly taken from that Rolling Stones interview. So if you want to go ahead and read that for yourself, go ahead. Uh, there's... There's not really anything too interesting in there other than the stuff I pointed about Kevin and how she's basically trying to like say, oh, I'm directly involved with Kevin. When really, uh, no, I think Kevin went over your head to get a movie over there. And Bob Igor said, make it happen, devil woman. And I think that's where that's coming from. The direct shade she threw at George Lucas. That's pretty interesting stuff. Basically saying, oh, he's not coming back. You have me. So... Yeah, I think she's gone. She's definitely going to get fired after this movie because I just don't see how this movie can be a success. It just sounds like a mess with all the reshoots that they're doing. I mean, you can't do that many reshoots and expect this to be a Golden Globe winner. It's just not going to happen. So I do think that she's going to be gone after this movie. Probably within the, the year, they'll announce it at some point or they'll just wait it out and then announce a successor, which, oh, she's training. You know, nobody ever gets fired in Hollywood, so she's going to just resign and say she's taking this year to train her successor, which means she's sitting in a broom closet, crying, eating a box of chocolates, and really uh, hitting that boxed wine real hard because she lost the job. So anyway, let me know your thoughts. What do you think about her shade at George Lucas? What do you think about her shooting down the idea of George Lucas coming back? What do you think about Kevin Feige possibly supering her and taking her job? Give me your thoughts. Let me know. Throw a like up. Two great things you can do for the channel are comments and likes. So make sure to make sure to consider doing those. Also, share the video. Make sure you still subscribe. Hit that subscription bell. Hit that notification bell. And I will see you on the next one. Peace. Also, if you want to help support the channel, check out my Teespring store. There's a link in the description. You can find some merchandise in there that you might want to check out. Also, take a moment. Make sure you're still subscribed to the channel. Uh, there's something going on right now, and they've been unsubscribing people. So just take a second and double check on that and subscribe if you're new.